but we've got lives to live. Not knowing about water can feel very overwhelming, but not knowing about anything could feel overwhelming. But I promise you, if you stick around to the end of this video, you will know as much as I do about building water profiles in your homebrew. And we're gonna feel less dumb. At the end of the day, there's only two things that I care about. Making sure my rent check doesn't bounce and feeling less dumb than the previous day. We're gonna learn about water. And we're gonna learn how to add it to a beer recipe. I'm sure we can make this video in four minutes on how to add water adjustments to beer smith or brewer's friend, but we're gonna learn why we're adding those. We always hear that New York City has the best pizza, the best bagels, the best coffee, and they claim that it's from their water. What am I drinking right now? I'm drinking water. Every city has different water and New York's is said to be soft, which means it's been filtered, but soft isn't always the profile we're going for for a particular beer style. So in this video, we're gonna learn three things. Beer salts and the basic chemistry of them. What water to use and how to accurately know what's going into our mash. And three, how to plug it into software. Brewer's Friend, Beer Smith, there's a bunch out there. So sit back, crack a beer, take off your shirt, and let's see how hairy you are. All right, beer salts, or salts, are chemistry. It's a lot easier to understand if you're working backwards from beer salts than to start from the beginning. If you're starting from the beginning, we'd have to get into atoms, the smallest form of matter, and getting into protons, neutrons, electrons. Protons have positive charges, electrons have negative charges, and neutrons have no charge. Jimmy Neutron, I missed that motherfucker, man. If the atom has more protons than electrons, it's considered a positive charge, a positive charged atom. And if an atom has more electrons than protons, it's a negative charged atom. And all those pluses and minuses create different elements. Mess with the numbers, the positive and negative, you change the element. Common positively charged elements, calcium in beer, calcium, magnesium, sodium. Common negative charged elements, chloride, carbonate, sulfate. Take a positive element and a negative element and you put one of these together, it creates a salt. Any which way you want to mix and match these. Opposites attract. It's just like a battery. It's just like love and that Paula Abdul song. What is table salt? Sodium and chloride. What is magnesium sulfate? It's Epsom salt. What is calcium sulfate? It's gypsum, the same shit that they make drywall with. What is calcium chloride? Uh, I think it's just calcium chloride. I don't think there's a common name for it, but unlearn all that shit. Whatever I just said, get it out of your head. Men in black. Life would have been easier if we just worked backwards. What is gypsum? It's a beer salt. What is a beer salt? It's a salt. What's a salt? It's a compound of two elements, one positive, one negative. Why do we put elements or salts into our beer? The reason why we are here, it's because different salts alter the pH of our beer, whether the beer is gonna come out more acidic or more alkaline. And also because these salts help us determine the softness or hardness of our beer. We're gonna talk more about that at the end in part three, what we're adding and why to different beer styles, but that's what beer salts are, two elements, positive and negative that affect our pH and affect our softness and hardness. Tune in to next week's video where we play seven minutes in hell. Water, the redheaded stepchild of beer. When thinking of beer, more particularly craft beer, what gets the most love? Hops, without question. Everybody knows the high alpha acid hops. Simcoe, Amarillo, Galaxy. And then what gets the next most love? probably grain, then yeast, and lastly water, which is kind of ironic since 90, 95% of beer is water. There's a lot of waters out there. Bottled water, alkaline water, spring water, tonic water? Maybe I'm just playing too many video games. Mineral water, well water. But when it comes down to brewing, there's only three types of water that I use. Reverse osmosis water, distilled water, and city water, or tap water. All right, snack, crackle, and barrage. From these three waters, let's go from the toughest to easiest on how to control what's in our water. City water is the toughest. I live in Carlsbad, California, where city water is super hard. What does hard and soft water mean? In short, how much dissolved calcium and magnesium is in the water? And it's measured in milligrams to liters, or more commonly PPM, parts per million. Under 60 PPM is considered on the softer side and over 
and over 60 up into 180 is considered hard, but it's still a wide range. Hard water is great for hoppy beers like IPAs. So what's the problem with it? Yeah, it's got calcium and magnesium in it, but it's also got a bunch of toxins and shit in it like chlorine and lead and mercury and arsenic and pesticides, herbicides. And that all depends on how well your water is treated, which is all city regulated and EPA approved in America. Unless you live on a well, which is a different story, but I don't use well water. But I'll tell you right now, if I go and drink my tap water, it tastes metallic to me. Here's a little life hack, brush. I've worked in restaurants, bars, tasting rooms, speakeasies, etc. Want to make shitty tap water taste good? Just make sure it's chilled. The colder the water, the more it's going to hide that shitty tap water metallic taste. The nicest restaurants in the world serve tap water as drinking water. But let's stay focused. The other thing about city water, which I actually haven't brewed with and at least over a year is just the report you can google your city's water report but it's going to be from the previous year at least the previous year but most importantly they are testing it from their treatment plant they're not testing it from our faucets in our kitchen what did that water pick up coming from the treatment facility to our faucet through those hundred year old copper pipes and magnesium and calcium both cause corrosion, which means it's gonna eat away at that metal. That means we're gonna have copper that's coming through. So what's the best way to get the most accurate report for city water? Fill up a bottle from your faucet and then send it in to your local water treatment plant or an EPA plant and they will send you the water report for your tap water and then you would make your adjustments from there but that's way too much work and it still could have toxins in our water once elements are in the water you can't take them out you can always add but you can't subtract you could i mean you could dilute the water to make it less parts per million but that's just going to throw off your whole five gallon brew day mash scale a much better course of action than tap water is ro water or reverse osmosis that's what ro means reverse osmosis when in doubt just use RO water. What is RO? What is reverse osmosis in a nutshell? It's filtered water that gets filtered multiple times through different filters. Think of a false bottom or a wall that has the tiniest holes in it and microscopic holes that only water can get through and then it keeps the sediment away. And not all sediment can get away unless you distill your water. Here's the problem though with trying to build a water profile with RO water. These companies filter their water multiple times to get all the bad stuff out, but it takes the good stuff out too. And then they add calcium and magnesium and other minerals back to it to make it hard, but it's almost impossible to get a water report. I've called them multiple times. I've waited on hold to, to talk to a representative that tells me what's in their water and they will not tell me. It's weird. It weirds me out. And I don't know why other than maybe I'm a future competitor and I'm trying to steal what they do, but I don't know why they wouldn't tell me about that. So you'd have to do it the same way. You'd have to take your glacier water or your Primo water, send in a bottle to your local treatment plant, and then they're going to send you an analysis. But there's even more factors. They clean their systems and they change out their filters every so often. So your water report can vary from month to month if it's new filters and new membranes and UV stuff at the start of everything, your water's probably gonna be more filtered. And at the end, it's probably gonna be not as filtered. So here's the best course of action by far when you're building a water profile. Distilled water, distilled water. What is distilled water? It's exactly what it says it is. It's distilled water. The same way they make moonshine, whiskey, rum, and all that fun stuff. Boil up some water, the vapors go through a chamber or a column and it gets condensed back into liquid and it leaves everything else behind all the good stuff and all the bad stuff distilled water is the softest water you will ever get it's got no good things in it it's got no bad things in it zero ppm all across the board calcium lead magnesium mercury arsenic turkey jizz and then we take the distilled water and we build it back up using gypsum or um epsom salt or table salt or uh, food grade chalk to get where we want that to be. Distilled water will always be like your blank canvas, your blankest canvas, starting from scratch, your safest bet when building a water profile. And as home brewers, we have an advantage over commercial brewers. They can't use distilled water. It'd be way too expensive, way too expensive. Commercial breweries just go off city water. Then they add a carbon filter, charcoal, and then they add water adjustments accordingly. If they use distilled water, their bills would be through the roof. Breweries use so much water. 
If you're brewing five or 10 gallon batches, use distilled water if you're trying to build a water profile every single time. What does it cost? Five bucks, 10 bucks? And I'm probably only gonna use distilled water from here on out. After like the fifth time I made my hard seltzer, uh, click on that link in the bio right there. Click on that, the link to this video will be right there. And when I was using RO water, I would get like this yellowy hue that would come out a few days into fermentation. And I never got that with distilled water. I don't know if that rolls over to beer, but it gives me peace of mind. $10 ain't bad for water. If you're really worried about money, $10 isn't bad. Buy pounds, buy hops by the pound and get your base malt in bulk. It, if you're at least brewing once a month. So let's plug it in. Let's actually see what these beer salts do. All right, we are back in the Beat Lab, and there's a bunch of different softwares out there. Some are free, some aren't free, but this will be good enough. This is a great website right here, uh, Brewer's Friend. I'm always still using this, whether you're extract brewer or you're doing water stuff like this. Check it out. It's uh, it's great and it's free. Um, we'll look at this and we'll study this a little bit. Let's, uh, this is just what I would do. This is a very weird video for me to make, but cause we could honestly, this could be a six hour video, but we're not going to do it. We're going to do it the homebrew for life way. Here's how I do it. So, um, here's our water. Here's our chemistry. Here's our parts per million. And let's add everything accordingly. Let's, uh, reload this and from the top. Total water volume. I'm going to do probably eight because we're going to do, we'll just call it three and a half for strike and three and a half for sparge. That's seven. Why eight? So we can drink a gallon of water the next day when we're explosively hungover. Um, what are we going to brew today? Let's do a, a West Coast IPA. So let's have it light colored and hoppy. I like it. And let's update target and it shows you what we're going for. Here's our source minerals here. We're using distilled water. So it's zero all across the board. Generally, okay, I'm, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. You gotta know your symbols. Calcium, magnesium, sulfate, sodium, um, chloride, uh, bicarbonate, alkalinity. These, this is pretty much why we're here. This goes hand in hand. Some of these bring the mash pH lower. Some of them makes it higher. Generally you're shooting for a mash pH of about 5.2 to 5.5. And that's kind of a wide range. That covers pretty much every style of beer that I've ever done. And when you're using, uh, we'll do we'll do a couple of beer styles really quick, but if we're doing like a porter or something, we're gonna have a bunch of roasted you know, chocolate malts. And with that, it's gonna make the mash way more acid. So we'd have to use food grade chalk to bring it back. Uh, IPAs are the exact opposite. We're trying to bring it down. Generally, we're bringing the pH down. Um, and it puts it in tablespoons over here, but I just stick with the grams. That's how I've, I've, I've always weighed everything out. Chalk, we're definitely not gonna have chalk in a West Coast IPA. Baking soda, no, they kind of do the same thing. Gypsum, I generally do the six, three, two uh, ratio for, um, Epsom salt, calcium chloride, and calcium sulfate, gypsum. And we could go on forever and talk about the sulfate to chloride ratio. And this is just what I do. And this is what, with my distilled water, this is how I add beer salts to my West Coast IPAs. 73 parts per million, uh, calcium. And if it's green right here, I think that means you're within like a 20 parts per million range. If you you just type in something ridiculous it's going to show up in red yeah so that's generally what i do for west coast ipas and then it's got add teaspoons over here i never do it i just weigh everything out on a super small little anvil scale in grams and it's good to go and if it's not it's going to let you know it's going to have the red flag um canning salt i honestly never put salt in beer I, table salt in beer unless I'm doing a goza or something and then let's do a uh, pilsner and we're probably not gonna add much let's give it all this let's reset and update and uh, where's our pilsner pilsen 
Maybe one gram of chalk. Cool. Works for me. This is what I do. I start with distilled water and this is whatever I'm brewing. I pull this up. I look at the forums online. It checks out. And uh, there's a lot of debate we could talk about. Some people want to have 350 parts per million in their IPAs for sulfates. And uh, that's going to dry. That's going to be a pretty dry, uh, dry hoppy beer. Because what that's going to do is going to dry your hops out. And ultimately, it's going to make your hops stand out more. And it's, uh, I think it's going to create more of a pine taste. Um, now, let's look at probably the exact opposite of this. Let's do like a porter. Let's update this. <sighs> Clean slate. Yeah, so porter is going to be a little bit different. Let's probably... We talked about this last night on the broadcast. I think that um, stouts and porters go bad the fastest, like canning beers and stuff like that, because their their grains are so damn acidic. And after like six months, you crack a beer open, and sometimes it tastes so acidic it's like peppery. Um, so how do we prevent that? I don't know if you can just pack it with a ton of chalk. We'll start with we'll do five chalk we'll do five grams baking soda good thing about beer salts they're cheap you can buy a pound of food grade chalk it's gonna be five bucks it's gonna last you a lifetime um gypsum um calcium chloride calcium sulfate ratio i, I don't know it doesn't have to be two to one for a multi beer uh let's do three and let's do three and that works for me then i would take this information and i would plug it into brewsmith and i add it during my strike you can add your salts uh add it during your strike or to your mash i don't like putting it in the sparge a lot of times i don't use all my sparge water once i get to six gallons we stop sparging sometimes there's still like a gallon left in there so to get your most accurate accurate reading put it in your strike or your mash tun and uh, this is what I do. This is how I add beer salts to my mash. And that's it, guys. Uh, a couple things, a couple things. When you're testing your mash, don't do those little tabs. They never work. Just drop the money on the Milwaukee pH tester. We've already made videos on that. We've got uh, the Vivisun one, the $20 one versus like the $150 Milwaukee one. If you're serious about beer, have to invest in the Milwaukee um, you guys have any questions? There's probably going to be a lot of questions. We'll, we'll definitely talk about this on next Wednesday's broadcast. But that's how I do it. I go off this, and it's easy to have control over when you're using distilled water. And uh, let me know if you guys uh, like this video or troll this video. Live your lives, man. Smash this. Uh, thumbs up this video if you liked it. Thumbs down it if you hated it. And uh, we'll see you guys on the broadcast next Wednesday, and we'll just talk about water because there's a lot of subjective stuff. There's a lot, a lot. It, water is all about pH for the most part, but there's so much stuff on the internet where you use one of these beer salts and it caters to a certain beer style. I don't think you can really prove whether that's how much, if that is or not, if that isn't true or how much truth there is to that. But let's talk about it on Wednesday. That's the video. We're out of here. Um, and then just take this information and go, I go back into beer Smith and I just put wh whatever recipe is five grams, chalk, five grams, baking soda, three grams, gypsum and three grams, calcium chloride. That's it. We're out of here. Cheers to eating good and drinking good.